Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie and today is video number 18 of my Beginning Gardener series. Now it's a gorgeous spring day. Well actually maybe it's not quite spring yet. It'll be spring in a few days. It's mid-March but the weather is perfect. The soil is perfect in my garden beds to plant. So we're going to transplant out my pea seedlings and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. Now since the weather is going to be nice again in, in the next few days, actually we're going to have a storm tonight and a storm tomorrow. It's going to work its way into Thursday. This is a Tuesday. After Thursday, we're going to plant out some other vegetables because I don't quite have time to do it today, but we're going to harden off those seedlings. So let me show you which seedlings we're going to put outside and harden off and tell you a little bit about what that means. But here's the shelf that is going outside. We've got some chijimisai and cabbage and kale that are going to go out. They can be planted any time now, but I just don't have the time to do it yet. So we're just going to put them out and harden them off. We're going to hold off on the onions. I like to hold off on the onions because it looks like we're going to have temperatures in the 20s again. The peas and the kale and the cabbage can handle that, but the onions may end up bolting a little bit later this year if we do that. I don't want them to have too hard a freeze. So these are going to go out at the beginning of April. We've got more cabbage, more kohlrabi, totsoi and spinach, all sorts of things like that. So all the coal crops are going out, including the Asian greens. Now the one thing that is going to wait is, you know, right here I do have my golden physalis and that's going to go out in May. But the cauliflower back there is going to go out at the same time as the onions. It's not quite as cold hardy as the cabbage. So we're just going to put that out with the onions. So let's get going, take everything outside and I'll show you where I harden my seedlings off. So here they are. This is where I harden off my seedlings. Now when I talk about hardening things off, what I mean is I take them outside so they can get used to all the conditions of outdoors. So far they've been in my grow room with nice warm temperatures, a fan that's been hitting them very gently, and uh, grow lights that are not as harsh as the sun. So these need to get used to the sun little by little. I had them outside yesterday for most of the day, but it was a cloudy day. Today it's a little bit sunny, but we're going to get a storm around 1 p.m. So I'm going to bring them in for the storm because I don't want them to be hit by the, by the winds that are going to come through. And then they need to get used to colder temperatures in the indoors. So, starting, so once the storm has passed, I will take them out and leave them out until it gets really cold and let them experience the cold temperatures. So now that we've talked about hardening off, let me go show you where I'm going to put my peas. The peas need to be hardened off for less time than everything else. They're very, very hardy. The one thing they cannot tolerate is staying in their pots for too long. Peas grow roots really rapidly and it's better to just direct sow them out in the garden. But we had freezing temperatures and frozen soil up until yesterday and I couldn't get my peas planted when I wanted to. So I planted them in pots about a week ago and now it's time to put them in the garden. Let me show you where I'm going to put them. So now we're out here in my garden and there's one thing I almost forgot to talk about and that's why I decided to choose this spot and how I know my peas should be planted here. And that's going to take us back inside to my computer and I'm going to show you my garden plan. It is really, really important to make a plan and follow a plan, especially if you want to succession plant your garden. And by succession planting, I mean, as soon as these peas are done, I want to have other plants ready to put in their place. And I want to do that with every single one of my garden beds. So each one of my garden beds has a plan so that I know what to put in it and when. So let's go look at my plan and see why I'm putting the peas here. So this is the way I do my garden plan. These are all PDFs. I have one for each month all the way through December. And it pretty much shows the layout of my garden. Now there's a lot to discuss on how I put this together and I already did another video on that. So I'll link that up at the top and down in the description so that you can see how I put this together. But as you can see over here, we have peas in. So the peas are going to be going into this garden bed, which is the, my top garden bed today. And this is March, the month of March. I put them down as in bed seeding, but the weather was so cold that I couldn't plant the seeds in the bed when I wanted to. It, the ground was just frozen solid. So I actually started these a week ago inside. 
I've started all of these other seeds inside already. So I do like to have this area on the side that shows what I need to do for this month. So peas are going to go in in the month of March and it looks like I'm going to be taking my cabbage and kale and kohlrabi out of my greenhouses and planting the new ones on the lower beds this month. So now I have a plan. I know exactly what needs to be done, where the peas need to be planted so I can fit everything in for the rest of the year. Let's go out there and get it done. So now we know why we're putting the peas here. So let's talk a little bit about peas and what kind of conditions they can tolerate. So these are my peas right here. We've gotten some good germination on them, except for, you know, there's been a couple of cells. I think there's been only about two cells that didn't germinate. And I'm going to link a video at the top that'll talk about the type of peas that I'm planting. Basically, they're the sugar snap. I love the sugar snap because the pods are edible and the peas get large and they're also edible. So peas germinate very quickly when the temperatures are right. These were indoors where it was warm and I planted them last Saturday and I think it's a Tuesday today. So these germinated very quickly. And if you look at the bottom here, you can see that the roots have already come out the bottom in less than a week and they're already starting to dry out. So if I were to wait very many more days, see there's, there's the little root right there. So if I were to wait very many more days, these peas would not do well once they were transplanted. So I'm gonna show you right now how we're gonna transplant these. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the pea out of its pot. You can see all the roots there already. It's really started out well. Now I'm not gonna do any amending on this bed because I already did that last fall. Peas don't need a lot of nitrogen. They don't need a lot of fertilizer other than maybe phosphorus and potassium. As you can see, there's a lot of good compost on here. There's a lot of straw from last year. And the bed is, you know, I actually put fertilizer on it a little while ago. So this bed is ready to go. So we'll just dig a hole, move the straw aside, dig a hole, stick the pea in there, the same height that it was in the pot. So it doesn't stick up above the soil or go below the soil. And then we're just going to tuck it in. And I am doing this on a day where it is supposed to rain so that I don't have to worry about watering it. Also, because we've had enough snow and moisture this year, oh, see, I broke my pea, but, it'll, but there will be more growth from each node. And the nodes are where the leaves meet the stem. So that one will be just fine. But anyway, we've had plenty of snow this year. And so this bed is plenty wet. So we, I'm not going to have to worry about watering it right now, especially since the rain is coming later today. Now, if this bed were dry, I would have watered it first before I planted the seeds and then watered it again afterwards. And then I would have been careful to keep this bed evenly moist until the seedlings started to grow really well. You know, if there was no rain at all, like last year, we didn't have rain, very much rain in the spring. I ended up watering these beds with a hose once or twice a week. And I just, what I would do is I would dig down, see how wet it was and when it felt dry about an inch or two down, then I would water, then I would water it again. So let's finish getting these seedlings planted. Now the spacing for these seedlings needs to be about an inch to two inch. So we're going to be planting these pretty close together. I'm just going to dig several holes here. Be very careful that I don't break it again. There we go. The peas are planted. They're ready for the rain to come and water them in. And we should get a good head start on peas this year. 
Now I really didn't plant that many peas. I'm the only one who eats them here and I don't usually save them or store them. I just want a few to put in my meals. Now I will plant another crop of peas in the fall, but so far this is going to be enough for me for this year. We're gonna save the rest of the bed for the other veggies that we're gonna plant in here. Now one other thing about peas, they can tolerate some part shade. They do need sun, but they can tolerate part shade and they can tolerate really cold temperatures. On the years when the ground is not frozen, I'll plant them mid-February and then they will just sit there in the ground and wait until it's warm enough to come up. And it usually is around the 1st of March. So hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has been helpful, I hope you like, subscribe, share some comments down below. Let me know your favorite pea varieties and when you plant your peas and if you've already been able to plant them and even possibly gotten a harvest, I don't know. I would love to hear about it and I hope you go have a wonderful garden adventure.